Hey, God bless you, my friend and sister Sharon. And today we are discussing why it is very dangerous to hold the truth in unrighteousness. In other words, friends, to know what is right, but you continue to justify anything in your life that is unclean, it is vile, and you make excuses for it. I'm going to give us six examples of vile affections that the scriptures tell us in Romans that God will turn a person over to their own vile affections. When you do not call sin what it is in your life, if you justify that which is unwholesome, unholy, unclean, it is not not uh, something that any of us should boast in at all, friends. It's just sin. And we try to justify ourselves. And the scriptures tell us, friends, and this is very, this here is serious. It doesn't get any more serious than this. Romans chapter 1 verse 18 begins with this. For the wrath of God was revealed from heaven against all, or is uh, revealed from heaven against all ungodliness, unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. In other words, God has revealed you know right from wrong, and you keep justifying it. Friends, then it goes down to verse 24. It says, wherefore God also gave them up, talking about the children of Israel, gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. He's talking about homosexuality right there. It's Paul's epistle. It's his letter um, written uh, to the Romans. Friends, we must look at some things very carefully. Because if you do not call that thing what it is in your life, you could end up completely enslaved and you cannot get any victory because you are frustrating grace in your life because you are calling your affection, your inordinate affection, that thing that you should not be affectionate about whatsoever, you are calling it good. The number one thing that we see that has swept uh, across America, especially after it was legalized, for a man and a man to marry or two women to get married, and that is homosexuality. The scriptures clearly tell us friends, any sexual uh, um, acts that is committed outside of the marriage covenant is simply sin, period, dot. This is not rocket science, friends. This is simple. So when you call your affection towards the same sex, you call that thing right, God will turn you over to your affection, your vile affection. You will continue to be like masses of people who compromise and they tolerate. They will not call out the fact homosexuality is wrong, wrong, wrong. That's, that's, that's number one. If you try to justify that, and I need you to read Romans chapter 1, verse 18 through 30 for yourself, friends. It's something to consider. God is nothing to play with. And these inordinate affections is what opens the gateway to becoming a reprobate. And when you're speaking to someone who God has declared a reprobate, you will know it because no matter what you say to them, they got scripture for you. They got something for everything, friends. They got so much logic for all of it. But at the end of the day, God is going to send them straight to hell, friends. They will perish. They will be in torment forever because you have held the truth. And, and many do. You've held the truth in unrighteousness. You are holding the truth. You know it in your deep heart and you still determined to do it your way. Number two, inordinate affection, a vile affection th that you or I could have, a lusting, a, a, an affection is for smoking cigarettes, cigars, and weed. Friends, it doesn't matter who legalized cannabis or every day of the week, God never ever authorized us to inhale anything from this earth in a way that it gets you high. It changes your demeanor. It changes your cognitive thinking. 
thinking, friends, you are deceived if you think you're going to go to heaven and you are unclean and you are entertaining this affection in your flesh, man, to smoke your weed and get high. You're deceived, friends. He will turn you over to yourself. Oh, friends, you got to read Romans chapter 1 for yourself. Go look at it for yourself, my friends. So anything you are smoking and bringing into his temple, the temple belongs to God. Wide is the road that leads to destruction. And there is a way that seems right to a man but the, or a woman. But at the end, you're going to be destroyed. And God will turn you over, friend. And, and, and I just made the video, friends, about the woman I met that was smoking cigarettes for years and years and years. Demons was tormenting her. She told, she told, she told it herself. But yet she calls herself a minister. She had no joy, no peace, no nothing going on in her life, but doom and gloom. Why? Because she calls evil good. She justified killing her lungs. She justified that filth because that's what cigarette smoke is, is filth. You can't justify it, friends. I was there. Look, raise my hand. I was there. But the moment I met Jesus Christ within weeks, he spoke to me and I got rid of it, my friends. Number three, inordinate affection where God will turn you over for, for regarding the truth and unrighteousness is pornography. Don't let nobody trick you, friend. It doesn't matter how many people are engaged in this this is filth, friend. When you're sitting up watching someone having sex, it is vile. And if you're not careful because no one's watching, that's why people stay indulged in this, this lust of the flesh because no one's watching you but God. But don't make no mistake, friends. Pornography will take you straight to hell. It is sin, Every day of the week. The fourth thing, friends, this is something I need you to hear me because we have people who have inordinate affection towards animals. They will fight you about a dog and a cat and a bear. They want to fight you, friends, but they won't fight for Jesus. And they say, they claim, they proclaim they are followers of Jesus, but they're more concerned about dogs and cats and bears and lions and horses. And oh, my friend, wake up. That's inordinate affection for an animal that does not have a soul. And there are people who are depressed and angry because their pet died. Friend, do you not know what? Yes, that's a, that that's just a pause. Just pause. You are angry at God because your cat died. Inordinate affection. There are people who have literally lost their lives because they were into animals. They 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 worship these animals. They bring them into their homes. Friends, wake up. People are losing their lives with wild animals. They are not pets. They should be outdoors. They should be in the jungle where they're supposed to be, not in your house. Oh, friends, oh, wake up. And you have people, you have, friends, I saw a woman on a video who married a tree. She got married to the tree. That's called inordinate affection. That is foolishness. She married the tree. She's in love with a tree. Friends, but see if you do not scale the walls of your own soul and call what you're thinking what it is, it's vile and it's filth, it's inordinate. It shouldn't be floating around in your heart and in your head until you call that thing what it is. You will end up becoming crazy and an enemy of God. Ain't no way God put no tree, nothing of no such for us to. Number five is people don't want to call it what it is. Oral sex. Is it is a gateway to all manner of disease. It harms a partner. If your spouse tell you 
whether they are Christian or not, and you're pressuring your spouse to have oral sex with you, friends, you, you are pressuring your wife to sodomize her brother, inordinate affection. There are men, more so than women, who bully their wives or whoever to have oral sex with you. But we, we that are children of light have to consider the facts. When we was in the world or when we were backslidden or when we weren't doing like we really should in our walk with God, we did all manner of things. But now that we are children of light, we must consider everything has a purpose. And the purpose of the genitals is for contact, the male penis with, the, with our female vagina. It is for intercourse. Our mouths were created to worship to talk, to sing to God, and to eat food. So when you, friends, to it, don't, don't ever get it twisted. Don't think your flesh don't like inordinate affections because it does, but it lowers us to our animal, that I can't say our animal nature, but to your flesh nature that can make you like an animal. You put your mouth on anything. What kind of... Wake up, friends, because God will turn you over to your vile affections and you will end up, many people leave out of here early because you got all kinds of diseases because you put in your mouth where it was never created to be placed. And if you want more understanding about oral sex, because some of you, you're just perverted, period. You're just a gutter in your mind. That's why it's like, oh, we can, we shouldn't have oral sex. You, you just nasty. Tell the truth. You just nasty nasty. You ain't going to get free from all your demons, friends, till you call your vile affections what they are. Because when you hold the truth in unrighteousness, you become an enemy of God. Go read Romans chapter one for yourself. God will turn you over to what you want and you will perish. As I close this exhortation, he or she that has an ear to hear. You call evil good. You tampering with your soul. You're rolling the dice. God bless you, my friends. Till next time.